And we're joined now by Simone Jackson, superstar on USC women's soccer. They're fresh off a, a huge win over number six TCU. I was out there. Th their heat was uh, maybe even worse than football's uh, last Friday. And Simone got it started early, though. You cooled everybody down about, what, three minutes in? You hit a rocket into the upper corner. And for you, that was that was really your first action of the season. How'd that feel to basically get your season started off right? It was amazing. I just kept hearing my mom's voice like, get in early, get in early. It's too hot for this. Someone, I was like, okay, three minutes, one second. Let's, let's go. <laughs> how was that first? Obviously, how was the game, the whole thing, how it unfolds? You beat number six TCU. I mean, it's got to be a big moment for the team. It was a big moment for the team. We really needed that to boost our rankings. It was my first game back from World Cup, so I was coming in home opener. It was a great feel. First few games of the season under your belt, you, you kind of figure out the team a little bit in off season, I'm sure, but you only know so much until you actually play. What have you learned about, uh, about your squad so far this season? I learned that there's nothing better than our fight. Like we went down early in the season and, and now we're picking ourselves back up. Doesn't matter what the temperature is, we're gonna come and bring it to them no matter what your ranking is. Yeah, it's a weird start though, because as you mentioned, you played in the World Cup, so did some of your teammates. And this was, uh, I forget, it was the U19s or the U20s? U20s, U20s. Yes. So, you know, you had your teammates out there. You now have teammates out that are on <laughs> senior duty, I think, senior yes. national team duty. So it is kind of a weird sort of stunted start to the season. How difficult has it been sort of adjusting? Your teammates had to adjust without you. That was maybe harder, but now you have to adjust without some of your teammates. Yes, it's obviously difficult to adjust losing role players, but it's, it's amazing. That we have so many people on international duty that just is a testament to how great and well-rounded we are. Tell us a little about, about the new coach, Coach Alec Kunis. How, how, how's her feel for the team? What's it like getting with, uh, work with her and, and what what's she bring to the new squad? I love Coach Shane. She really shifts the culture. Um, it's, it's amazing to play amongst an environment where everyone genuinely supports you and loves you. So it's like creating a fun practice environment as well as listening to input. It's a, it's a major shift that we needed and I think it's going to show. You have a few games uh, until conference play. What does the team need to uh, kind of check off before you, you start getting into Pac-12 play? We need to get our players back <laughs> from across the country. <laughs> That's what we need. But um, I'm, I'm excited for us. I'm really excited for us. Last year, you were the new kid on the block, and the attack had Penelope, who you know ends up setting goal scoring records, and then Croy, sort of in the position you're now. So now, now, what is, is it like to have that sort of dynamic duo with you and Croy, and, and learning to play together, and, and and being the focal point of the attack? I mean, she's the number one player in the country. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than that. To have a right hand man that I know that's going to deliver every single game, and the consistency is is perfect from her. So I'm excited. Obviously, the expectations here for women's soccer has always been through the roof, and you guys have really earned that reputation. What are the expectations for this year's team? What are the realistic goals that you guys are trying to set and say, hey, we can we can reach these kind of goals, and this is what we can do this year? We want a natty. It's on every <laughs> slide. <laughs> we repeat it almost every team meeting, and, and like that's the focus. We're zoned in. Your brother obviously plays receiver here as well. Is there any comparables to running routes on the football field <laughs> to getting open on the pitch, I believe is how... Uh, very much so, yeah. very much so. I mean, I learned from the best, you know, late runs, fast runs. Um, I run routes on the beach, so I translate it to the soccer field and it works. You're listening to Simone Jackson on Trojans Live. We have a fan question in here from a, a Jay Jackson wondering, who is the best athlete <laughs> in the uh, Jackson family? Oh, gosh. Hands down, me. That's like what he said. He, would say. he called me earlier today. He said, ask her this. She's going to say it's her. Yeah, I'm coming after all his little ranks. <laughs> <laughs> he always tells us that, too. Yeah, she's, she, it, it'll be her, she says. So uh, when, when you're on campus, I've, I've always find this interesting because I had a younger brother, and we went to high, to high school together. And so we, we would kind of hang. I kind of thought he was, uh, maybe I should hang today. Do you hang with your brother here on campus, or you guys kind of stay separate, have your own little cliques? What's what's the story there? Funny story. Everyone's like, Simone, you followed your family. You followed your brother. I was like, yes, I did, and I live in the same apartment complex as my brother. Oh, so so I like, wake up. I'm like, good morning. <laughs> so it is a hang. It is a, it is, it a is, tight bond. It is a tight bond. That's awesome. So it's a one-stop shop for your uh, for your folks when they uh, when they come visit. It is very convenient. Are you, are you guys able to kind of – vent to each other about the, the the athletic side of things we definitely do so I'm, I'm always like that supportive shoulder whether it's me or him like i we always want to see 80 thrive and when they're not Love it that. hurts me it, it fuels me and just like him just the same to him 
You know, we've talked a lot uh, in the NIL era about uh, some of the bigger football names and whatnot, but what the truth of it is, a lot of the, our, our female athletes have thrived, and, and, and you're somebody who started to take advantage of that. What's it, what's it been like now, you know, having this opportunity to uh, take advantage of your name and likeness and, and, and you know, use your talents to, to, to help you? It's amazing, especially at this university. Like they put us on display, and I'm taking advantage of an NIL deal, deal coming up soon. You guys will have to have me back to, yeah. to explain more about that. But I'm Show very excited product. about it. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. That'd be great. I'd love <laughs> to see that. It brings, yeah, bring some swag. Yeah. We, we're always maybe, about that. maybe. What's the celebration like? What, you're you're a goal scorer, so you got to have. Is it like a branded move, or is it just kind of something that comes out of you? It's just pure elation, just fist pumps. Okay. <laughs> Are you the only soccer player that has 80 that you face? That's got to be a unique soccer number. I think I'm the only player. Like, who else would have my brother and my dad's <laughs> NFL number? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, and I'm happy about it. Love that. Well, you look great. You knocked, you knocked one in on Friday and got that season, really started going back in the right direction. Simone Jackson is back on the pitch, and USC women's soccer, I think the rankings probably come out tomorrow or the next day. They'll be back in the top 25 and going – uh, with high expectations, Simone already said championship is on every slide, and that is the goal. They have the talent, certainly.